himself had to go through all the things he went through, including Potiphar's wife. But it was an attempt for him to bend. It, it, it wasn't about his destiny, but about the destiny of the entire Israel. And that guy knew that what I'm, I am carrying is not just my destiny, but the destiny of the entire Israel, entire race. You see why you must choose not to fail? Because what you are carrying is beyond you. It's the destiny of the entire family. The Judas goat. I think the team is self-explanatory to some extent. Am I correct? So when we say the Judas goats, some of us may have or must have had a glimpse or a picture of what we're about to talk about. But anyway, the Holy Spirit is going to be helping us this morning to navigate through his word and to learn extensively from the birth of Jesus. Why is the birth of Jesus so important? I know there are some people in some quarters that said that we shouldn't celebrate the birth of Jesus. Mind you, we are not celebrating the birthday of Jesus. I've told you that. It is the birth of Jesus. Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. We are, we are marking the birth of Jesus. We are commensurating. Do you understand? Yes. It is birth. The fact that he was born is enough reason why we are celebrating him. Because if he was not born, he would not have died. Without his birth, there will be no redemption. You know, there are some folks that say, no, 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 just celebrate the Easter. That Easter is the most important time, is the most important season, because that was the time that he died, he was buried, and he resurrected. Am I correct? But the truth of the matter is that what? If he wasn't born in the first place, he would not have died. So redemption began, all right, from his birth. So redemption journey started at his birth. Are you getting my point? So if Jesus was not born, there would not have been anything called redemption. So humanity would not have been saved. From the entrenchment of sin and from the hands of the devil. Are you getting my point? Why is it important? Matthew chapter 2. There is a very important lesson that the Holy Ghost drew my attention to that I desire to draw your attention to this morning and it's going to bless you extensively. It's going to bless you tremendously. Just pay attention to this. Matthew chapter 2 and can we read from verse 2? Uh, from verse 1. Matthew chapter 2. Then can we read from verse 1? Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, where was Jesus born? Where was he born? In Bethlehem of Judea. In the days of Herod the king. I want you to underline Bethlehem of Judea in your Bible. Because this morning's Bible study or <laughs> lesson is going to be centered around Bethlehem of Judea. So now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. I know there are some of you who have been taught that there were three wise men. There were not three wise men. You know, in children church, children class, I, I, I believe there is no such thing in this, in this ministry. <laughs> because we don't, we don't teach our children junks. You understand? We don't teach our children unverified, you know, information from the word of God. So, there, there are no three wise men. There are not even three wise men. In fact, theologically speaking, alright, they said the wise men were so multitude in numbers. They were in their hundreds to a level where the entire city was agog that what kind of people is this? And what have these people come for? Do you understand? So their presence in the entire city was felt. 
Because they were not just three. If they were three in number, the, the, the entire city would not have filled their presence as such. Do you understand? The presence of those guys were felt in the entire city to a point where they knew that, ah, what, what, what are these guys? Are you getting my point? So they were more than three. They were not even three. Of course, we are getting there also during the course of this teaching. So there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Now, can we take it further? Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. <clears throat> When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Can you see that? The entire Jerusalem was troubled because the number of people that came were many. So if there were only three, the entire Jerusalem would not have been troubled. Are you getting my point? What have these visitors, you know, seen hundreds of chariots and horses in a coming, and you see the convoy and you are now thinking, what are these, this convoy, what, what are they for? And you see them with loads of goods. I hope you know that the, the things that were presented to Jesus were not just small, small things. Do you understand? No, we get there too. And so when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests, and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Alright? Can we take it further? And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea. Why Bethlehem? Why Bethlehem? The question is, why was Jesus had to be born in Bethlehem of all places? What is it about Bethlehem? That the only place where the man child, all right, that is God in the flesh could be born is Bethlehem. Why not in Jerusalem? Why not in any other places? All right, in Israel. Why did he have to choose Bethlehem of all places? You, you see, by the time I further explain to you, you know, the historical background and the Bethlehem as a city and as a, a, as a community, you will understand why I keep asking this question. Why was he born in Bethlehem? Number one, he was born in Bethlehem because it was foretold that the Messiah was to come from the house of David. Second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12 to 13. Second Samuel Chapter 7. Can we read that scripture? And when thy days be fulfilled. This is God now speaking to David. He said, and when thy days be fulfilled. And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. He said, I will set up thy seed after thee. Which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. Now, now, you might be thinking that God was actually referring to Solomon. I knew there are some people who have taught this and said the, 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 that, that this is actually referring to Solomon. Are you getting my point? No, it is not Solomon. And I'm going to show you the reason why I said it is not Solomon that God was actually talking about. Can we read verse 13? He shall build and house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom for a while, forever. forever. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Please observe the word forever in that scripture. In other words, this prophecy could not have been fulfilled by David's physical descendants. Only the Messianic king who will rule forever. And we establish his throne and his kingdom forever. Forever. So he was actually talking about Jesus. So this is actually a Messianic word 
prophecy. Luke chapter 1 and in verse 32. Luke chapter 1 verse 32. He said, He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Are you seeing that? That this father proved to us that what was highlighted all right, in 2 Samuel that we just read, chapter 7, he's talking about Jesus. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father. David. Uh, now, let's see Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. Luke chapter 2. Uh, and, and it came to pass in those days. Of course, it's the same story. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Hmm. And his tax was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. The next verse. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. All right. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David. So he went out of Galilee unto the city of David because a prophecy need to be fulfilled. Unto into the city Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. So he needed to move out of Galilee to Bethlehem because the time has come for a prophecy to be fulfilled. You see why some of us, the reason why you are in Abuja this season is because of prophecy. Sometimes the reason why you are working in that organization this season is because of prophecy. The reason why you are in Nigeria this season, are you getting my point? Is because of prophecy. The reason why you got married into that family where you are presently married into is because of prophecy. Because as far as we are concerned in Christ, the Bible says all things work together for us, okay, that are called according to what? To his purpose. So the intention of God and the journey of every child of God is towards fulfilling a purpose. And that purpose is a prophetic destiny. So that guy moved from Galilee at that moment and he went to where? To the city of David which is called Bethlehem. The Bible said, because he was the house, he was of the house and lineage of David. Actually, he could have remained in Galilee and pay his tax there. Do you understand? But the reason why something pushed him there, because a prophecy needed to be fulfilled. Sometimes the reason why something pushed you into this church is because a prophecy needed to be fulfilled. The reason why something push you into the environment, the community where you currently stay in now, is because a prophecy needed to be what? To be fulfilled. You see, sometimes, one of the undoings of many believers, is, you know, is that we are so much carried away by physical environment such that we become insensitive to what the Lord is doing in our lives per time. Why am I here? Why am I not, not in that other place? Why am I living in this environment at this phase of my life? Why not in somewhere else? Why am I in this family? Why not in somewhere else? Do you understand? Why am I in Nigeria? Why not in UK? Why not in US? Why not in somewhere else? And why am I in the UK? Why not somewhere else? Because what? What is going on in your life is that what? There is a part of the prophetic agenda of God 
that required that environment to be fulfilled in your life. Until you are in that environment, that part of the prophecy will never come to manifestation. So the guy moved out of Galilee to Bethlehem because it was time for a part of the prophetic agenda of the Messiah to be fulfilled. He needed to be born. And the place where he should be born is Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem of all places. Why did the Lord have to choose Bethlehem of all places? The reason why I'm saying this is because Bethlehem was just a small farm. You know, a farm community as a den. It wasn't a big city. A small farm community. A place where you could literally, you know, have, where they literally had just few hundreds of people living there. As, as a den. So it was a farm, a small farm community. Then why did he chose to be born in Bethlehem? Can I say this? God was to be born and yet came through a family that will solidify the unbelief of those who were sent to. You know, sometimes the one with the rod may not be believed because he didn't show up the way people wanted. So, there is a way people wanted you to show up. And because you didn't show up that way. And they don't know that they are, you are actually their deliverer. You are sent to deliver them. But there is a way they wanted their deliverer to show up. Are, are you getting my point? Uh, uh, in other words, that's why he says that he is taught as heaven is higher than the earth, so also he is taught higher than our thoughts. God doesn't see the way men see. He doesn't see the way men see. No wonder Jesus, when he came, he said, the stone which the builder has rejected has become the head of the corner. What was Jesus actually talking about? I'm going to explain that briefly. Have you ever wondered sometimes why were you born into that family of yours? Why this family of all families? Why am I in this family? There are others who came from a wealthy family. There are others who came from a battle-free family. There are others who came, you know, who were born into a family where everything was already ready. And why this family, since the day I was born, it has been from one level of battle to another, one level of battle to another. When I thought that I'm already, that the battle is over, another one will show up. While I'm thinking, I'm celebrating a victory, another battle shows up. While I'm still celebrating another victory, another battle shows up. Why, I, you know, was I born into this family? How many of you have asked that question? Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you start asking God, Lord, when will this battle be over? When will it end? Every day and night, I keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and it's from one prayer to another and, and, and the thing seems not to be ending. When will it end? Why was I born into a family where people die prematurely? Why was I born into a family where people don't rise? What is really going on? You know, there are times that as believers in Christ, you start asking yourself that question. Why this house? Why this family? Why this place? Of all places? Can I say this? You see, every family has a prophetic destiny. Every family. When God was to call the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called them family by family. He didn't call them as individuals. They were called out by families. You know, in the book of Genesis chapter 49, a certain man 
by name Jacob was about to die because he was stricken in age. And he assembled his 12 sons. 12 sons, 12 is symbolic to government. And he assembled all of them and said, all my sons, come here. Let me pray for you and tell you what's going to become of you. And those 12 sons of his, all right, um, became the 12 tribes of Israel. In other words, they, they formed the 12 families in Israel. And each of the tribe had a specific prophetic word, destiny. Apart from the general prophetic destiny of Israel. Each family had a, pro, a specific prophetic destiny. Do you understand now? So, and when you study critically, each of the families of those 12 tribes, you discover that they, they encounter peculiar battles. The battles of God was not the same thing as the battle. Do you understand? That confronted Reuben or that confronted um, uh, 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 you know, and the rest of them, Judah, and, and so on and so forth. Because every family has a prophetic destiny. And listen to this. Listen to this. The battle peculiar to your family is a point of the magnitude of the prophetic destiny that that family is carrying. So when you are saying, Lord, what is going on here? You look at, you look around. Look, all, look at all your uncles. Nobody has risen. When you look around, you see all the female children. Nobody is doing well. Those who eventually said they married, they divorced. Just within five years of marriage. Those who, you know, lasted more, longer, they, they became widow. Just less than ten years in marriage. And then you start asking yourself questions. What is going on? And now, you know, there are some families that there is division. They are having issues, confronting them, going through spiritual, serious spiritual battles, and yet they are not united. Everybody is just chasing his own. Nobody wants to, you know, join hands with his siblings in order to put an end to that demonic assault. Everybody is just on his own. So what is going on? What is happening? Then you start asking yourself question, what kind of family is this? If there is an issue that requires contribution of finance or money, nobody will show up. Not because they don't want to, but because they don't have. Are you getting my point this morning? So can I say this? The battle peculiar to your family is a pointer of the magnitude of the prophetic destiny. That, for instance, if you come from a family where the only thing they believe in is spiritual consultations, traditional spiritual consultations, that is a sign that that family is carrying an ancient prophetic mantle that the devil has perverted. So what should you do as a believer coming from that kind of house? Instead of complaining, discover the source of that ancient mantle and chase it, pursue it in the place of prayer and inquiries. Do you understand? It will land on you. And the moment that lands on you, then you become the family's deliverer. Because whenever God wants to deliver a family, he sent a person. Whenever God wants to deliver a family, he sent a person. That's why when God was giving an instruction to Moses, when in the book of Exodus, before they left Egypt, he said, all right, you know, he said, make sure that each member of the family, somebody comes out and represents the entire family with a lamp. So, in other words, a lamp for the entire family. So, the one with the lamp is the representative of the entire family. So, because that one lay hold of the lamp, alright, 
and splash the blood of the lamb on the what? On the lintel, the door of the house. Because of that individual, the entire family will be secured. When the angel of de death passes through what? Egypt. So if you come from a family where women and polygamy is a challenge, uh, the men always have issues with women. Immorality. And poly that is a pointer that they are revivalists. And the devil is trying to pervert that word, that mantle. So you that came from that family, instead of complaining, what should you do? Make inquiry about the family and lay hold of that ancient mantle and become the deliverer of the entire household. Sometimes you see a family where everybody is divided. Siblings don't talk to one another. They don't see each other highball to highball. They don't call each other. Everybody is divided. Everybody is doing his own thing. Everybody is just running his life. And they don't care about what happens to any of their siblings. That is a pointer that that family are born leaders. They are people that are meant to be in government. Alright? To be in places of authority and power to set things in order. And the devil saw it and decided to pervert it. So what should you do? Are you getting my point this morning? So Bethlehem was to be at the forefront yet at the back until the advent of Christ. This is why Jesus said, the stone which the builder has rejected has now become the head of the corner. What was the stone? Bethlehem. And God specializes in bringing men all right, from the back side of life and showcasing them into their generation. We have plenty of examples in the scripture. So God specializes in making the last the first. Do you understand? Raising a nobody to become a generational asset. This is why I often tell people, don't ever write off any man. Don't. Because sometimes, the rejected might be the deliverer. Do, do you understand? And if you don't treat him well now, when he is being rejected, on the day of his showing, you will be neglected. We have so many examples of men in the scripture. Saul is an example. Look at Saul. When Saul was looking for his father's donkey in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And you know what happened there? Okay? And eventually met the prophet of God. And the prophet of God told him that last night the angel of, God, of the Lord appeared to me and told me that what? By this day tomorrow, which is now, all right? The man who is going to be the king and the leader over Israel is going to meet me high to high ball. And what was Saul's response? In verse 21, Saul said, Am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin. So my family is not... If the Benjamites are the least, they are the smallest, they are the youngest... Among the tribes of Israel. And in, in, in the, you know, Keda of that youngest and smallest family, my family is also at the back side. How come I'm now the one who has been chosen to lead God's people? Because God specializes in bringing men from the back side of life to the front. We saw similar experience in the life of Gideon in the book of Judges chapter 6. When Gideon had that encounter with the angel of God. And he said, behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. My family is poor. I'm the least in my father's house. I'm the youngest. What do you have to do with me? And the angel said to him, go in this thy might. Because as God does not look at your inadequacies, 
He does in fact, that inadequacy is even the, the things that command the attention of God. Do, do you understand? When a man thinks that he's unworthy, when a man feels that he, he, you know, he, 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 you know, I, I'm too small to be used. When, when a man is not thinking, he's not full of himself, and he, he is always, you know, he, he understands the messy dimension of God. That man can be raised by God anytime to become a generational asset. Matthew chapter 2. Can we read verse 2? Do we have the Passion Translation? The Passion Translation. <laughs> the Passion Translation. Matthew chapter 2. And we read from verse 2 to 3. Hmm. I have the Passion Bible here. So he said, and inquired of the Lord, all right, of the people, where is the child who is born king of the Jewish people? We observed a star rising on the sky, and we have come to bow before him in worship. Hey, can we, can we see the next thing that the Bible talks about in the next verse? Verse 3. Can we read it together? King Herod was to the core when he heard this. And not only he, but what? Was disturbed when they heard this news. Hello? Your arrival is what is causing the family altars to shake. You see why sometimes you became born again? And after when you receive the life of Christ, you thought all would be well. And then you now discover that that is when the battle became multiplied. And it became fears on your life. I thought I've been delivered. Because the Bible says I've been delivered. Who had delivered me from the power of darkness and what? And translated him into the kingdom of his dear son. But I'm experiencing the... What is going on in my life? I thought now that I'm in Christ, the crisis are over. I thought that now that I'm in Christ, you know, the family battles and confrontations are over. And then you discover that that is when the devil comes at you fiercely. Do you know why that has happened? Because your arrival is what is making what? Causing the family altars to shake. Your arrival is what is causing the family altar to shake. He said King Aaron was shaking to the core when he heard this. And not only he, but all of Jerusalem was disturbed when he heard this news. So they are shaking because they know that the deliverer has come. The family altar is shaking because the deliverer has come. They know that now that this guy is now born again, every member of the family is about to be set free. Why do you think that Joseph had to go through the things he went through? Because the prophetic destiny of Joseph was to deliver the lineage of Jacob from, you know, from premature death. God has seen ahead because he knows the beginning from the end. He knew that for as long, you know, as this guy, okay, fulfilled this destiny, then Jacob is going to be preserved. Israel will be preserved. Because God knew that there will be famine all over the world at some point. And so Joseph was raised for that purpose. Joseph was raised for that, and the devil saw him. And he began to what? To attack and manipulate him. He began to do all kinds of things against him. He began to do you understand? So the battle was not even about Joseph himself, but it was about the liberty of his entire family. It was about the liberty of the entire Israel. Are you getting my point? So, but why the devil thought that he was doing his worst? No wonder the Bible said, had they known they would not have crucified the king of glory. So why the devil thought that he's doing his worst? 
He didn't know that he was actually pushing that guy into the place where that prophecy was going to be fulfilled. The devil might be thinking that he's doing the worst in your life now. Without knowing that, all the things that are happening around you, he, 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 is, he is assisting God. You know, he's assisting God towards pushing you into destiny. You know, why you are thinking that Nigeria is not working? I want to go to England. You know, and then you get to England, you are being frustrated from place to place and place to place, and you are moving from place, from state to state. You know, the devil might be thinking that it's frustrating you without knowing that he's actually, you are being pushed from place to place, assisting God in taking you to a particular state where you are going to locate your destiny ever. So the arrival of that guy brought about the shaking of the family altar. You see why you, you must not, you cannot afford to fail. Because when you, if you fail, the entire family has failed. Uh, uh, do you understand? Uh, the liberty of the entire family is dependent on you. The freedom of the entire family is dependent on you. So, no, you, you, you understand? So, instead of saying, Lord, why, why is this battle like this? Make inquiry. What is it that belongs to my family that the devil is so much interested in that is making him to, to assault everybody like this? Make inquiry. And by the time you see it, ah, pursue it with the whole of your heart. When you lay hold on it, then you stand up. All right, and every member of the family will be set free. And then the generation after world, eh, we never forget you. They will say, Ah, there arose a certain Deborah. There arose a certain Caleb. Do you understand? They, they, do you understand? They will say, There arose a certain Juliet. There arose a certain blessing. And this premature death was terminated permanently in our family. Amen. There arose a certain Israel and the spirit of poverty was permanently terminated in our family. There arose. Because one person must always arise. Because when, whenever God wants to set a family free, he chooses a man. And that man will see hell. That man will be confronted. That man will see a lot. That man is going to go through all. Do you understand? That man is as though all the forces that have been militating against the entire family will now lynch themselves on you. They will unleash themselves on you. Why are they doing that? Because they are afraid. They are afraid of the freedom of the entire family. They know that once this guy comes out of this thing, ah, we have lost, lost our grip for life. Are you getting my point? You see why you must never fail? You see why you must choose not to fail? I must be the one that will carry the shoulder. That you know, I, I, will, I will present my shoulders and carry the responsibility of every member of my family. I have to be the one. I have to be. Every one of them must enjoy freedom on the platform of my freedom. So Jesus was born, and the Bible said, Hale Koshimana Hefele Bradia. And Herod was shaking to the call when he heard this. Herod was shaking to the call. And not only he, but all of Jerusalem was disturbed when they heard this news. The gate of hell is shaking. That ancient family water is shaking. Are you getting my point? Yes. The reason why the witches and the wizards in your family are shaking is because they know that a deliverer has been born. And they will unleash all the things that they had in their reserve. All the forces and powers and all, you know, the things that they had in their spiritual state, they will unleash it against you. But why they do all of that? Haven't done all to stand. Stand. Yes. Stand. Yes. Stand. Stand. 
Because you are not fighting a, 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 your battle. It's a battle of a lifetime you are fighting. Stand. Okay? Look at the power. Stand. Look at those forces. Stand. Look at those witches and wizards. Stand. Look at those metaphysical agents. Stand. So, you weigh it. This division must come to an end in my own days. This premature death must come to an end in my own time. Do you understand? This spirit of polygamy must come to an end in my own time. These demonic spiritual consultations, do you understand? Has to come to an end in my own time. So no matter what, I won't join their camp. No, I will not bend. Do you understand? Uh, see, the, the reason why Joseph had to go through all the things he went through, including Potiphar's, Potiphar's wife, well, it was an attempt for him to bend. It wasn't about his destiny, but about the destiny of the entire Israel. And that guy knew that what I'm, I am carrying is not just my destiny, but the destiny of the entire Israel, entire race. You see why you must choose not to fail? Because what you are carrying is beyond you. It's the destiny of the entire family. So you have to choose not. I refuse to fail. I refuse to cower. When every member of the family is complaining, you rise up, you stand up like an edifice. You tell them, keep quiet. I'm not here to complain. I'm here to provide a solution. And that solution, I will provide. Jesus knew his assignment. Right from age 12, he began to pursue his vision. He began to pursue his dream. He will not cower. He will let anybody, you know, swindle him as well or do certain things. He, he was focused because he knew that if I fail, a certain Adam failed and the entire human, human race failed. Alright? And the second Adam, the last Adam, which is me, I have come to redeem mankind. So ends the battles. And he was away. He was away. You have to decide, I choose not to fail. Say this to yourself. Say, I choose not to fail. Not to fail. Oh, oh, you don't mean what you are saying. Say, I choose not to fail. Not to fail. No matter the battle. No matter the say, I choose not to fail. No matter the battle. No I choose not to fail. Decide not to fail. Hallelujah. And God is going to back you up. Alright? God is going to back you up. God is going to back you up. Amen. God is going to back you up. Amen. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. Is there a family prophetic destiny that has been perverted by the devil? I command it to be reversed now. Amen. I command it to be reversed now. I command it to be reversed now. I command it to be reversed now. Be seated. How the Holy Ghost is saying to me that there is somebody under the sound of my voice. You are anointed, you know, as a man of God. And since the day you have accepted the call and the assignment of God on your life. You've been battling with immorality. The immorality is so, so strong to a level where you have come to that point where you are saying, no, I'm not going to do the assignment anymore. Let me just stay put. Are you following? And sort out myself. Uh, the Lord is saying, I should tell you, so did they do to your father and to the generations before you. God is saying, I'm aware. He said, brace up. Pick up yourself. Dust yourself. Shake yourself. Alright? Shake off the dust. Rise up like an edifice. And continue the journey. He said, because the liberty of the entire family members is tied around 
that assignment, that call of God on your life. He said, I'm a merciful God. Don't say the spirit of the Lord. He said, I have made provisions for your liberty. I have made provisions for your progress. I have made provisions to make room for you in the community of men. I have made provisions to make you a voice in the days to come. So these were the things that the devil has seen. He said, rise up. Pick up yourself. Forge your head. There is even a lady that is hearing me now. And, and you are looking at yourself. God called you even while you were very much younger. But at some time, you began to mingle with certain friends. And then you became pregnant. Pregnant, you had a child. And now you are looking at yourself that you are unworthy to fulfill the call of God on your life. The Lord is saying, you are not the one to determine who is worthy. He said, I, I do not call the qualified. I call, I qualify the unqualified. He said, I have chosen you among your peers and among your mother's children. He said, right from your mother's womb. He said, he has anointed you. He said, rise up. Shake up yourself. And move ahead. He said, he has shown you mercy. But you've got to forgive yourself. Because God said his intention for your life has not changed. His plan for your life has not changed. His purpose for your life has not changed. Stop looking down on yourself. Pick up yourself. Pick up yourself. And begin the journey. Sometimes the reason why you have so much confrontations is because you are carrying the entire destiny of the family. If only, see, let me tell you this. At some point, when the children of Israel were in Egypt, they began to cry. Lord, send us a savior. Wait, why didn't they say, Lord, send us saviors? Because whenever God wants to carry out his deliverance purposes, he uses a man. He just raises a man. He doesn't use multitude. Just one man. They, they, they didn't say, Lord, send us saviors. They said, Lord, send us a man. A man is enough. And then a certain Moses was tending his father's what? His father-in-law's um, sheep. And God said, that guy is worthy. And he brought him out. Moses had so many challenges. The devil knew that God will use his voice to deliver Israel. So what he did was to shut that voice and made him to become a stammerer. He knew. And God said, irrespective of what the devil has done to you, I will use you that way. Amen. Irrespective. I'm going to use you that way. Irrespective of what the devil has done to you. I will use you that way. As far as God is concerned, the deeds of the devil is inconsequential for the fulfillment of his purpose in the life of his children. So regardless of what the devil, you might be thinking that the devil is doing in your life now, just brace up. Know that what, regardless of what the devil is doing in my life, I am still usable. I'm still the one that is going to use to put a stop to this thing. I'm the one that God has set aside to put an end to this harassment. I'm the one that the Lord has set aside to put an end to this embarrassment. You, you know why? You know, it pains you whenever you remember. And it's not that pain in your other siblings. Because you are the deliverer. You are the one that has been set aside. No wonder when that guy saw the Egyptian hitting the Israelites. What did he do? He ran towards the guy, grabbed the guy, pushed him to one corner and killed him. What happened to other Israelites? Why didn't they do the same? 
Why were they looking at their brethren? Being beaten and battered by the Egyptians. The reason why the burden came was because he's the one with the anointing. The reason why you have the burden over the entire members of the family is because you are the one with the anointing. The reason why you have the burden concerning the marriage of all your siblings is because you are the one with the anointing. The reason why you, are, you have the burden, do you understand? Concerning your siblings is because you are the one with the anointing. The reason why you have the burden concerning your entire family is because you are the one with the anointing. So, stand up like an edifice and say, no, this family is dependent on me. It is on my strength they will enjoy freedom. So I cannot fail them. When people are saying, let's go to Habalist. You say, for where? Habalist? The generations before me visited Habalist. And the devil compounded their woes. The generations before me went to, from they visited, they went from place to place. Do you understand? And the devil compounded their woes. I won't do that. I'm going to remain with the Lord of hosts. Because I know that regardless of what the devil is doing, he's still going to use me that way. And I'm praying for somebody under the sound of my voice this morning. As the enemy try to shut your mouth because of your family, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I undo what was done by the devil. I undo what was done by the devil. I undo what was done by the devil. In the name of Jesus. I want you to say this to yourself. Say the liberty of my family is resting on my shoulders. No, you don't mean what you are saying. Say the liberty of my family is resting on my shoulders. Say, say it again. Say the liberty of my entire family is resting on my shoulders. Oh, I know why I'm saying. I'm asking you to repeat that. Say the liberty of my entire family is resting on my shoulders. Say, I choose not to fail. I choose not to cower. I choose not to give up because I know that the liberty of my entire family is resting on my shoulder. Do you believe what I what you just said now? Do you believe what you just said now? Can you shout amen? Can you shout amen? Can you shout amen? Why did Jesus chose to be born in Bethlehem? Number two. Are you getting blessed this morning? Jesus was born as in Bethlehem as a symbol of sacrifice. Micah chapter 4 and in verse 8. Can we have the English standard version? ESV. Micah chapter 4 and in verse 8. Jesus was born, all right, in Bethlehem as a symbol of sacrifice. And thou, whole tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. O thou, O tower of the flock. Can you, can you underline that? Tower of the flock. Tower of the flock. When he talks about the tower of the flock, I'm going to explain to you what the Bible actually meant. By tower of the flock. Now, can we quickly go to the same Micah chapter 5? Chapter 5, the next chapter. And can we read from verse 2 to 5? But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, 
Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee, you see that, thou be little among what? The thousands of Judah. He said, yet out of thee shall he comfort unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. The next verse, please. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travailed hath brought forth, then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord is God, and they shall abide. For now shall he be great unto the hands of the earth, that he shall be great forever. And this man shall be the peace. When the Assyrian shall come into our land, and when he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven what? Shepherds. And eight principal men. Luke chapter 2. That Luke chapter 2 again. So, you see the prophecy, the Messianic prophecy here, talking about where Jesus was to be born. And he called the place the Tower of what? The tower of what? Of the flock. The tower of the flock. Well, I, I, I'm going to briefly explain to you why my car had to use the, the metaphor, the tower of the flock. Luke chapter 2, verse 104. Luke chapter 2. Can we make it snappy, please? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. Cyrenius. Okay? And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And let's take it for that. And Joseph also went off from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Can we take it further? To be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. You see? Being great with child. So she was pregnant. So it was in, during the course of the pregnancy that they went to where? To Bethlehem. Because according to prophecy, they, has to be, they have to be in Bethlehem. Because the Messiah must be born in Bethlehem. To be taxed with Mary, okay, the, the next verse, please. The next verse. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Now, can we take it further? And she brought forth her first son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a where? Manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, before I explain this scripture, Remember in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. The Bible said when Jesus was born, there were shepherds. We are tending their flock in the night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to those shepherds. The angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherd and, and told them, the angel did not appear to the army. The angel did not appear to Herod. The angel chose not to appear to the priest in the synagogue. Why did the angel have to appear to the shepherd? Why the shepherd of all places? Because Jesus himself, the Bible calls him the chief shepherd. In other words, the one who is to be born is what? Is a chief one. Shepherd. And now, let, let me explain. Hmm. Bethlehem of Judah, actually the place where Jesus was born, is part of the outskirts of Bethlehem. And the name of that place is called Migdohida. 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 Remember he said he was born, he was an he was laid in a manger. The word manger is also the same word 
all right, translated as store or any holding area for animals. Now, I'm going to explain. In Israel, because they were under the law and they were practicing the law. And so, animals were required for sacrifices. Are you getting my point? And it is not every animal that is qualified to be used and to be offered for what? Sacrifices. God had already given them prescriptions as touching the kinds of animals that will be qualified to be used. Do you understand? For sacrifices. And so, and you know that the children of Israel were farmers. And they, they are also into animal husbandry. So they, they set aside a place called Midohida, which is in the outskirts of Bethlehem. And they decide to keep all the animals that are qualified, unblemished animals, animals that are healthy, which can be used for sacrifices. That is where they keep them. It is not that when you go to Israel, other places are free of animals. No. It's just that whatever animals that you see in Migdoida, it means that that animal is qualified to be used. Either as burnt offering or sin offering, trespass offering, whatsoever offering. You see, God is always meticulous in his purposes. Very meticulous. See, the details of your life is in his hands. You know what you should be doing part time. You know where you should be part time. According to the determinate counsel of heaven. He knows. He knows where you should be, what you should be doing. Do you understand when you should be there and what you should have part time? You see, when we have this understanding as God's children, one of the things it does to us is that what? It makes us to, as we walk with God, to keep enjoying peace along the line. We are not worried about anything. We are not bothered about what is working and what is not working. Are you getting my point? We, we, are, not, we are not coward. We know that all things are working together for our good. Because it, the detailing of everything, he knows. Look at the way Jesus was born. See where he was born. And see how it was related to his assignment and God's purposes for his life. So, Migdoida is, um, is in the outskirts of Bethlehem. In the outskirts of Bethlehem. And it is in that place, okay, that the animals that are qualified to be used and to be offered for what sacrifices are kept. And then, Jesus chose to be born in that same place. Let's see two scriptures. All right? In Matthew chapter 2 and in verse 6, the Bible talking about Jesus and said he will be what? Shepherd to his people. Hence, the appearance of the angels to the shepherd. Who, what, which animals were those shepherds keeping? The shepherd were after the animals that could be used for sacrifices. And the living sacrifice had come. Are you following now? And the angels went to the shepherd and said, the chief shepherd has come. And another scripture in John chapter 1 verse 29, the Bible said, God, Jesus is going to be used, you know, as sacrificed. So behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. It's going to be used a sacrifice. So you see, whatever animal that is born or that is found in Migdohida, it means that that animal, all right, is a sacrifice. So Jesus being born in that place means that what? A sacrifice has just been born. Why 
why the inn of all places? Some people said because he, he didn't have money. No, that was not what happened. It wasn't because, because the family, the Joseph and Mary came to pay tax. If they did not have money, where would they have had money to pay tax? Which means they have been working and they've been making profit. Because you pay tax as a product of the proceed of the profits that you have won, that you have made from certain transactions, business transactions. Am I correct? So which means those guys have been doing businesses and they've been making money. And so they decide to go to Bethlehem to also pay tax. So the challenge was not the fact that they couldn't afford a hospital. The challenge was the fact that what? A prophecy has to be fulfilled. So he chose to be born in the store. Or inside the, where they keep other sacrifices. Telling them that what? The chief sacrifice is here. Ah! <laughs> the chief sacrifice is here. The chief sacrifice is here. Friends, there's a prophecy over your life. There is a prophecy over your life. Refuse to die prematurely. There is a prophecy over your life. Refuse to end up like your father. There is a prophecy over your life. Refuse to be conquered by the battle that conquer your mother. There is a prophecy over your life. haven't done all to stand. 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 Don't sit. Stand. Do you understand? Stand. Because there are shoulders, there are people that are dependent on your shoulders to rise. There are people, it's not about you, it's about the entire family. And it's about the generation after you. It's not about you, it's about the people that are dependent on you. It is not about you. So sometimes when you are weak and you, you don't feel like praying, the reason why you will wake up and pray even when your body is weak is because you know that there is a generation I'm carrying. Their liberty, their freedom is hanging around my shoulder. So I can't, I can't afford to sleep anyhow. When Jesus, at age 12, they took him to the synagogue, right? And for three days, the parents were looking for him. What, what did he say to the mother? He said, woman, why are you looking for me? Don't you know that I must be about my father's business? Because he knew his, his assignment. A 12-year-old boy. He knows that ah, it is on the strength of this redemption that the entire human race will be set free. I must be about my father's business. A man who is carrying prophecy, he doesn't sit where others are sitting. He doesn't think like a nominal man. His thought pattern is different. His approach to life is different. His attitude to things is different. His attitude to his reaction to things is different. When something happens in the family and others are saying, oh, now, so the thing they happen every year. You will rise up and say, no. What, what the rubbish is that? It's ending with me. It was not continue with me. I mean, I, I want, you know, to get to that point where generations after me, they will look at me and say, ah, thank you, dad. Thank you, grandpa. Thank you, great grandpa. Because what we are enjoying now is as a result of the battle that you fought on our behalf. I mean, you stand up and your siblings will be thanking God on your behalf. That if not for this sister of mine, all of us will have been a mess on your life. Why am I alive? I'm alive to fulfill prophecy. Why am I, you see why you, you must make sure you do everything within capacity to, to keep living. 
Do you understand? You won't eat anyhow. You won't go to any place anyhow. You will not use your body anyhow. Because you know that, no, 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 no. There are people dependent on me. It is on the strength of my liberty that they will gain liberty. There is a prophecy. A prophecy. A prophecy. A prophecy. Somebody say prophecy. prophecy. Say, somebody say prophecy. prophecy. Say this, I'm a child of prophecy. I cannot end up this way. <laughs> Are you ready to pray this morning? You look at some of the things that have been going wrong in your life. And then you talk to, the, to it. Alright? God said I should tell you, ma, that the battle is over. Yeah. Do you understand, ma? Come on our feet this morning. You look at some of the things that have been going on. And you say, Lord, I can't end up like this. Because I'm aware that I carry prophecy. I'm a child of prophecy. I cannot end up this way. I'm a child of prophecy. I can't die prematurely. I'm a child of prophecy. Yes, I cannot be messed up. My life, my destiny cannot be messed up. No matter, regardless of whose life is being messed up in the family where you came from. Now it's time for you to pray and declare your freedom. Declare your liberty. Declare certain things. Are you getting my point? Declare, 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 declare. <laughs>